You're with Vanessa and Andrew for today's morning motivation yin yoga practice. We're going to start as always with some breathing. Today we're going to be practicing alternate nostril breathing. You want to be using your thumb and ring fingers as your blockers as we breathe in and out each side of the nose. We're going to demonstrate here how this works. You'll be using your thumb to block your right hand nostril as you breathe in through the left hand side and then your ring finger to block your left hand nostril as you breathe out through the right hand side. This can be a little tricky at first so you may want to watch the screen and follow along until you've got it. So blocking your right hand nostril with your thumb, breathing in through the left. We then pause briefly at the top before releasing the thumb, blocking the left hand nostrils with your ring finger and then breathing out through the right hand side. You then breathe in through the right hand side, again pausing at the top briefly before releasing your ring finger, blocking your right hand side with the thumb and breathing out through the left. You then breathe in through the left hand nostril, pause at the top, release the thumb, block with the ring fingers and breathe out through the right. Breathe in through the right, pause at the top, block with the thumb and breathe out through the left. So just continue this method of breathing on your own now. If you get a bit confused along the way, don't worry, just Relax, take a moment, and if you like, you can restart the cycle of alternate nostril breathing. Or if you'd prefer, just return to natural breathing, breathing in and out slowly for the remainder of this breathing practice today. Alternate nostril breathing can be very energizing. It's a great practice if you're suffering from any um, hay fever, nasal congestion, helps to sort of even out your airways. Um, it can also be very helpful if you suffer from headaches. So it's a great one to include in your practice. Wherever you are, coming to your last cycle now, Inhaling, pausing, exhaling, then switching sides. Inhaling, pausing, and exhaling. And then just sitting quietly for a moment before we move into our first posture. So when you're ready, if you could start by coming to an all fours position on your hands and knees. We're just going to do a few rounds of cat cow before we get into our first posture, just to bring a bit of movement through the spine. So as you inhale, arch the back and look forward. And as you exhale, round the back, looking towards your navel. Inhale, arch the back, look forward. Exhale, round the back, drawing the navel towards the spine. One more round, inhaling here into your cow position and exhaling up into cat. Before walking your hands forward and bringing your head and chest down towards the floor. We're coming into a posture which targets an opening through the chest, shoulders and upward and back. It's known as melting heart. So you want to put your forehead perhaps down to the floor. Some people like to have their chin 
towards the floor, hips should be high. But feel free to adjust, walk yourself a little back, a little forward to find a position that provides you with that opening through your chest and shoulders. Once you've found that position that's right for you today, coming to stillness, focusing on your breath. So just continuing to breathe in and breathe out. Enjoying that opening sensation through your chest, through your shoulders. With each breath, allowing your body to sink a little deeper into the pose. Just a couple more breaths here now. And then when you're ready, slowly releasing out of the posture and coming back to a seated position. Legs out in front of you on the mat. In our next posture, we're gonna be going for a stretch right down the back side of the body. So all the way down the back of the legs as well as the back. So when you're ready, allow yourself to gently fold forward over the legs. You'll start to feel that stretch down the back of the legs, the hamstrings, and then also right the way down the length of your spine and the muscles surrounding the spine. You might like to rest the hands on the body or perhaps on the mat alongside you. Just looking to come to 60 to 70% of your edge, not pushing down into the posture, but just finding a position that you can rest comfortably for the next couple of minutes. As you breathe and settle into the pose, Allow the muscles to relax. Allow your body to relax into the position. And try to remain still. As we come into the final minute in this posture, allow your body to open, perhaps sink a little deeper if that's available to you today.
and after your next exhale gently bringing the body back up taking just a minute to pause here perhaps leaning back on your arms taking a bit of movement through the legs Our next posture is going to be targeting the groin area, the inner thighs. So when you're ready, bringing your legs out to the sides. Looking for something approaching a 90 degree angle, but for some people that may be more, for others it may be less. But just back up off your maximum a little and then walk your body forward. Pelvis is going to tilt forward slightly here. Some people find it useful to sit up on a folded blanket um, to assist that tilt, which allows them to feel that stretch down the inner thighs a little more. Try to keep your feet relaxed in this posture. Upper body relaxed as you bend forward. Coming only as far forward as your whole body allows today. You may like to rest your body on your hands. On a block or a bolster can be quite comfortable. We are gonna be here for a little while so Try to find a position that you can hold for the duration. And as in all yin postures, as you start to relax in the pose, you may find that the body starts to release. You're able to take it a little further. So listen to your body and Allow it to help you find the position that's right for you today and then relax into stillness. We never want to be feeling any sharp pains while we're in our yin postures but we do sometimes feel a little bit of tension. So you may be feeling a little tension in your back, um, perhaps where you're along your hamstrings. Um, although this is a, a posture for primarily for the inner thighs and groin, the hamstrings can sometimes feel a little tight here. So if you need to adjust to ease that, you can do so. Or an alternative is to try and send your breath to that area of your body where you're feeling that tension. So just focusing on that body part as you breathe in. Sending the breath there. And as you breathe out, you may find that some of that tension starts to be relieved a little. The breath can be a great tool in our yoga practice. So just taking a couple more breaths here now. Inhaling and exhaling. It's 
starting to think about coming out of the position in a moment. And as you're ready, beginning to walk the body back up, legs come back together, taking any movements that you might need here before we come into our next posture. So we're coming back to our hands and knees. We're going to step the left leg forward into a low lunge. Some people like to put um, some padding under the back knee here, perhaps a folded up blanket or towel. Your hands can come up onto the front knee or leave them down onto the ground and untuck the back toes. In this posture you should be feeling a stretch right in the front of your right thigh, so your hip flexor area on the right hand side. You may need to adjust the position of your front foot to feel that stretch, perhaps moving a little forward, a little back. I know a lot of people will say that the knee should never go in front of the ankle, sort of forward or over the ankle, but we're all made a little differently. so. You just need to find the position where you're not feeling any sharp pain in the knee, but you are getting a good stretch down the front of that right hip. And once you've found that position, we're just gonna hold here. This can be a challenging position to hold for some time. So do the best that you can. Try to keep your balance. I know my balance was not 100% with me today. So if you do need to, if you do fall out or you need to take a, a short rest, come out briefly and then allow yourself to sink back into the position. We're going to come into a variation for the last minute now um, which will extend the stretch down the quad of that right leg. So if you're comfortable where you are, feel free to stay in this dragon posture with the low lunge. If you'd like to take the variation, we're going to bend the back knee and take hold of that ankle or foot with your right hand. This does add a bit of a challenge and it can be a very intense stretch for the quarter back leg. So if you give it a try and it's not for you today, then just release the leg and come back into your previous posture. wherever you are now, releasing out of the pose. Stepping that left leg back. It's taking a short rest here before we switch to the other side. We're gonna step the right foot forward into that lunge. Left knee remains on the mat, untucking the back toes. Remembering you can keep your hands on the ground if you prefer, or if it provides a better stretch for you to that hip flexor area, then you can bring your hands up to the front knee. Whatever 
option you've taken here, allowing yourself to sink into the pose, breathing into any areas of tension, enjoying the stretch that you feel here through the front of that thigh, hip region. Depending on how far up you are, you may even feel this stretch coming up through the stomach muscles. So remembering to breathe here, enjoying the sensations in your body. Just a couple more breaths here. And then you can either choose to remain in this position or if you took the variation on the other side, then you can come into that on this side as well. So if you want to take that variation, you're going to bend up the back leg taking hold of the ankle or the foot. You should feel that stretch start to move down the thigh into the quad area. And you may notice that this side of your body feels a little different to the last side. That's completely normal. We often have one side that's more flexible or less flexible than the other. Just notice that, accept it. And if the posture is not working for you on this side, you don't have to hold it. Just come back to the previous position. So wherever you are coming out of the pose now, Returning to a sitting position on the mat. Just taking a moment to settle before we move to our next pose. Our next target area will be the glutes. And some people also feel it in the IT band running down the outside of the hips. So this is a really great hip opening posture. You can start from that seated cross leg position or you could choose to have your legs slightly apart, um, any, any distance that's comfortable for you to see. We're gonna be coming forward over the legs, so finding a position that's comfortable for you. Another alternative is to stack one foot on top of the opposite knee, as I'm doing, creating a triangle position between your legs. Or as Andrew's demonstrating, you could stack one knee on top of the other. So just finding that position that's comfortable for you. If you have knee injuries or any pain in your knee, then you could also come into a figure four stretch on your back. Once you've found the right position, bringing the body, if you're upright, bringing the body slowly forward over the legs. Settling into the hips here. Perhaps exploring some of the variations I've mentioned if you're finding a lot of discomfort or pain in this position. And then once you've found your preferred option, just allowing the body to sink down. You should be feeling a real stretch and release through the, the hips here. For many people, the stretch is most apparent for the leg that's on top. However, um, some people will also feel this in both sides of the hips and glutes.
trying to relax into this position now. Notice where you might be holding any tension. Just try to let that go, allowing all your muscles to relax. You may like to explore walking your body torso across to one side or the other to see how that affects the stretch. If you prefer the stretch that you feel on one of these sides, then you can remain there. Or just return to a central position and then find that stillness again. So slowly starting to walk your body back up now. Take it easy, you are going to feel a bit fragile through the hips and lower back area. Just take a moment and when you're ready we're going to take the same posture to the other side. So you can take the same posture you took or try a different variation. Coming forward from a cross leg position Legs could be slightly apart. Alternatively, one ankle st stacked on top of the opposite knee or knee on top of knee. Or if you have challenges with your knees, then coming into a reclined figure four posture. Find your position. And then if you're in an upright position, start to walk your body forward. Just coming to where you feel that stretch through the hips, perhaps down the sides of the thighs. Finding a place that you can hold for a few minutes here. Exploring the variation that's right for you today and then settling into stillness. Try to keep the attention focused on the target area here. So the glutes, the hips, Noticing any sensations that may be arising in this posture and breathing into any areas of tension. Coming up to just one minute left in the pose now, so you may want to see if your body can sink a little deeper. Then just enjoy this final minute in stillness. With your next breath, 
Preparing to move yourself back to an upright position. Using your hands to slowly walk your body back up. Untangling the legs and taking any small movements that you need as the blood flow returns to the legs. For our next posture, we're going to be coming into a supported bridge pose. So you may like to use a block or a folded up blanket or towel or jumper, whatever you have handy. And we're gonna place that just under the shoulder blades across the upper back. So once you have your prop, popping that into position and then just allowing the body to drape back over that. So you should feel a great opening through the chest and shoulders here. A bit of arching through the back, the lower back. You could choose to bring your arms up over your head, perhaps taking hold of opposite elbows. Or if that's too much for you, just keep them alongside your body. This posture can be a really great relief if you're spending a lot of the day hunched over, um, perhaps working on a computer or writing, or just going about our day-to-day -day activities, we often spend a lot of time hunching through the shoulders. So this is a great antidote for that, just opening up through the chest and shoulders, moving the spine in the opposite direction to what it spends a lot of time in during the day. We are going to be holding this pose for a little longer, for four minutes. If at any time during the hold you want to come out early, just move your block or blanket aside and come back to a lying position on your back. In any of our yin postures, we don't want to be holding it for so long that it's causing you pain or serious discomfort. There's always going to be a little bit of discomfort. These are not necessarily comfortable positions to hold. But if at any stage you're feeling any sharp pain or you just feel that you're not wanting to hold the posture for as long today, then you should listen to your body and come out of the pose. Remembering to relax the body, letting any go of any tension in the legs and the feet, relaxing the muscles of the shoulders, the neck, the head, relaxing your jaw, relaxing your eyebrows, eyes closed.
So once again, starting to prepare your body for movement. Bring your arms back down alongside your body if they're over your head. Removing the block or blanket from under your back. And just come to lying in a neutral position on your back for just a moment here before we prepare for our next posture. So when you're ready, returning to an upright seated position, our next posture is going to be an inversion and we're going to be using the wall. So if you can find a clear space of wall, You want to bring your hips up close to the wall. So you're sitting alongside of the wall with your right hip or your left hip up hard against the wall. Then the easiest way to get into this posture is to just swivel your body around so that your legs come up the wall. Legs can be any comfortable distance apart or you may like to have them together. Completely your choice. We're just going to lie in this position now for a couple of minutes, allowing the blood flow to come out of the feet and the legs. This is a really great relaxing position, but it's also a great circulation booster. So we allow the blood to drain out of the legs for just a few moments, um, bringing greater blood flow to the head and the brain. And then when we return to an upright position, fresh oxygenated blood will flow back into the legs, um, making it really great for circulation. This posture can also help alleviate any back pain, um, especially lower back pain if you feel that. And it can also provide a great boost to the energy levels, which is why we've included it in this morning motivation practice. So just allow yourself to enjoy this position as we're here for the next couple of minutes. And coming back to the breath now, we're going to bring, slowly bring ourselves back. Legs coming down the wall, finding your way back to your mat and coming into our final posture, resting in Shavasana. So arms should be comfortable distance away from the body, legs a comfortable distance apart. Some people will prefer to have their hands on the body, so maybe one hand on the belly, one hand on the chest. Just finding your resting pose. Allowing the breath to be natural here. 
allowing the body to absorb the benefits of the practice. Perhaps noticing an awareness of the blood flowing through the body, the energy moving through the body. Maybe comparing how your body feels now to how you felt before the start of the practice. What's changed? While you could of course take as long as you wish in this Shavasana, for those who do need to move to the next part of their day, starting to bring some awareness back to the body, perhaps taking some deeper breaths, inviting some small movement into the hands and feet, fingers and toes. And as you're ready, bringing yourself back to a seated position. Thank you so much for joining us in this morning motivation practice. We really do hope it's brought you some energy to take out into your day. Namaste.